Hello, President Singh, members of the Board of Trustees, Superintendent Segura, members of the Austin IST community, and guests. My name is Kevin Hazel, and I'm the Texas Account Director who has been supporting the partnership with Austin IST since 2022. I'm excited to share an update from this year's Climate Survey Program and highlight some of the amazing work happening across Austin ISD. I'm also looking forward to joining you all in person at the upcoming board meeting to answer any questions you might have about this work and the data that we'll dig in together today. I've had the distinct pleasure of supporting Panorama's large district partnerships across the state of Texas for the past six years now, and I continue to be impressed by the innovative work happening in Austin ISD in particular. For those of you who may be learning about this work for the first time, I wanted to share a little bit about who Panorama is before we dive into the results. Panorama works with districts and school leaders across the country to build the capacity of leaders and educators in elevating stakeholder voice, and analyzing student outcome data to drive this continuous improvement process. We have the pleasure of working with over 100 districts and partners across the state of Texas and more than 2,000 across the country. Panorama does this work in a few different ways. We were founded by a group of students passionate about elevating stakeholder voice in decision-making processes since then, we've expanded our support of districts in aligning systems and tools to enable collaborative decision-making, drive their multi-tiered systems of support, and ensure on-time graduation. Panor through this work and through our different tools, Panorama works to streamline systems and create efficiency for educators, empowers district leaders to prioritize school support, and improve stakeholder experiences and outcome overall. Panorama partners and equips districts with a comprehensive view of every school and every student in one place so that educators can spend the time doing what only they can do best, supporting students. Today, I'm looking forward to sharing an update of the great work happening in AISD through that stakeholder engagement lens. For our time together today, first, we're gonna review the survey program overall. This might be a refresher for some. Share data highlights and key themes from the stakeholder feedback we received this spring. And at the upcoming board meeting, we'll be excited to dig into any questions, thoughts, and reflections that you all have. So by the time the presentation today ends, I hope that participants and viewers will have a solid understanding of our partnership and goals, are aware of some of the accomplishments we've made to date, and have the opportunity to surface any emerging priorities based on this year's results. Now let's revisit our goals and objectives from this work going back to 2022. To share a little bit about the survey program and how it was designed, it was put together through a collaborative process that has continued to evolve over the course of the three years we've worked together. At the start, a cross-functional team collaborated to identify key priorities and did focus groups where they landed on a few priorities for this work. They include climate and stakeholder satisfaction, staff development and retention, ensuring equitable practices and ASD support of students, staff, and families. And for the past three years, we have surveyed students, staff, and families each spring on the survey topics listed here. Topics ranging from climate to safety and belonging, leadership and engagement, in addition to some uh, custom district-specific items that are focused on um, elements that are unique to AISD. 
But for the bulk of the data we're collecting, we're utilizing Panorama's research back to validated survey instruments, which were developed in partnership with the Harvard Graduate School of Education. As we begin to ground ourselves in this work, today we'll be focused on um, those board constraints that uh, were retooled this year. But to give you a sense for some of the other ways that folks across the district are thinking about these data, we think about goal setting in a few different ways. First, student-driven. For example, through the student, uh, the Superintendent Student Equity Council, um, a group of high school students that are engaging in identifying student-led goal-setting priorities. Also through the lens of campus improvement and district improvement plans, thinking about participation goals as response rates, making sure that we're hearing from a representative voice of our stakeholders. And then finally, the different goals that um, we've set through 2026 for growth as a district. And here's a closer look at those board constraints through the retooled school card, scorecard that was announced this year. So constraint 4.3, we're focusing on staff participation with a goal of getting to 80% by May 2018. 5.1, Again, staff satisfaction, hoping to increase the um, school climate topic score from 60% in our baseline in 2022 to 80% by May 2026. Constraint 5.2, student satisfaction, again, focusing on school climate um, as a topic area, which we'll dig into in a few minutes increasing from 52% favorable to 80% district-wide. And then family satisfaction, hoping to increase the school climate topic from 71% to 80% favorable by May 2026. As we think about all of our work together, we're really excited to be in this place where we're thinking about how do we really um, take our reflections and learnings from the past two years and start to embed them and sustain uh, the work moving forward with a real focus on thinking about how do we uh, make sure that all of our stakeholders are aware um, that their voices are being heard and that uh, action is being taken based off of their feedback that they're providing. So now that we have a good foundation for uh, what the survey program is, what we're measuring, I wanted to jump in a few um, into a few data highlights and themes from this year. Starting with uh, survey participation, focusing on our student survey surveys, our campus staff and families. We've seen that while response rates of families and students have declined a bit um, over the past few years, staff survey participation picked back up this spring and is putting us back on track for our 80% goal by 2026, reaching 76% participation in the campus staff survey this spring. Although we have seen a decrease in participation among students, we're really excited to um, see that 30 campuses reached 90% participation or higher. And here we're listing a few of those um, that reached over 96% favor, uh, percent completion, which is very exciting. In addition, 59 campuses had over 80% of staff complete their surveys and 19 had more than 90%. So there's some uh, really great engagement and participation happening across the district. Now let's look at what those stakeholders told us. Here, we're looking at um, those board constraints, uh, the school climate topic, 
which is made up of several questions across students, staff, and family that roll up into that broader uh, percent favorable score, which is what we're using to goal set um, by 2026. You'll see here that uh, while we have seen a slight decline since our baseline in 2024, we did see an uptick since last year across students. And we've seen um, gains since the baseline across staff and family responses. Here, you'll be able to see that um, in grades uh, three through five, six through 12, and then a weighted average across all students. And then the same for instructional versus non-instructional staff on campuses. For the sake of um, our time together today, we can think about instructional staff being uh, primarily classroom teachers whose main uh, function is to facilitate learning in the classroom. Non-instructional staff could be coaches, uh, administrators, counselors, and all those other roles that support learning um, throughout the day as well. But really exciting to see, in particular, for our teaching staff or instructional staff, we've seen a 9% uh, increase in their sense of school climate since spring 2022. Overall, we've seen an 8% increase. And for families, while we've um, just seen a 1% increase from last year, we did see that our scores rebounded from a dip that we saw last uh, towards the end of last year. So let's take a closer look at our staff participation. Looking at our campus staff participation, we saw a really exciting increase from last year getting us up to 76% uh, of staff responding. While this was trending downward for a while, uh, we've seen great uptick in momentum and focus um, with a lot of our principals really trying to hear from as many of their staff as possible and pushing hard throughout the survey window to follow up with their staff and encourage them to participate. Here we can see that this puts us right on the trend line for where we, we need to be in order to get to that 80% participation by spring 2026, which is really exciting. Taking a closer look at what those uh, voices said to us, we've seen some really exciting growth across our teaching staff and our non-teaching staff since our baseline. We've seen uh, that um, almost every administration, our non-instructional staff and instructional staff have grown. And we see that instructional perceptions increased by 5% uh, percentage points and non-instructional increased by 6 percentage points since 2022. Building on that, this growth also shows that um, our campus-based staff fall in the 80th and 90th percentiles compared to other urban districts or schools nationally, which is really exciting. One thing that was interesting, looking a little bit at our instructional or teaching staff, we did see that um, there was a uh, pronounced difference between how our male and female teachers are responding, with female teachers responding about eight percentage points more favorably than our um, non or our male counterparts. Looking a little deeper at the topic of school climate, we can also see some really exciting increases um, across the question level. On average, AIST employees respond most favorably when asked about uh, things like trust and respect. And we also saw that non-instructional staff had an increase when they were asked about student interactions, showing significant growth there. So 
Um, in the bottom here, we can see how positive are students in their interactions with each other. Non-instructional staff notice a seven percentage point increase since spring, uh, the last time we took the survey in the fall. In addition, how often do you see students helping each other without being uh, prompted? We saw a three percentage in increase from the fall, which is really awesome to see. These might these include teacher uh, staff that aren't necessarily always sitting with students in classrooms, like a teacher. So it's awesome to see that their perceptions of some of those student interactions are notably increasing. We've also seen a 2% increase throughout this school year um, in a teacher's perception of how trusted they are to teach in the way that they think is best for their classroom. Moving on to student satisfaction, while we um, are seeing ourselves one percentage point below the baseline in 2022, two years ago, we did see gains over last year. In the image to the right here, what we're looking at is the percent uh, favorable change between um, 2023 and 2024. Like I said um, earlier, we did see a dip in school climate, uh, percent favorable scores for students going from spring 2022 to spring 2023, but this year we're seeing an uptick. And in this scattered plot, we can see um, above the dotted line there, all the schools that had increases in school climate this year. As we move up the scatter plot here, we can see even some of those schools that were already doing really well in school climate are seeing increases. And some of those schools that uh, might have been scoring less favorably in the past, they're also starting to pick up momentum as well. And then we have a lot of folks with minor uh, changes right in the middle here. That said, in grades six through 12, perceptions of school climate increased by two percentage points overall. And 18 schools had increases of 2% or more compared to uh, their scores in spring 2023. Of those 13 were elementary schools and five were middle schools. And eight of those schools had topic level gains that were greater than 5%. So what this says is um, particularly in elementary and middle schools, we're seeing some po positive movement. And in some areas, we might wanna identify who are those schools that are seeing greater than 5% increase and what can we learn from them or uh, glean from that information. Going deeper on student satisfaction and the school climate topic, Secondary perceptions of climate increased by two percentage points since spring 2023. With significant growth in questions about how positive the energy on campuses are in the physical space. That being said, one of the things that students might be telling us this year, um, and has been a trend over time, is that the impact of disruptive behaviors on learning remains the greatest challenge, particularly in the sec uh, secondary level. Looking um, across grade levels in secondary in particular, we're also seeing a pronounced difference at the seventh and eighth grade levels. These students tend to respond six to seven percentage points less favorably uh, below the 6th through 12th grade average overall. And we're also seeing similar differences across all five questions within this school climate topic. So um, on average, 7th and 8th grade students tend to respond across each question um, 
uh, a bit lower than their peers in sixth through 12th grade. That said, um, we also saw some great growth and uh, positive outcomes across other topic areas, not just the school climate topic. In four out of the six survey topics measured, we saw that elementary schools continued to respond strongly compared to the national average. Here we can see they're in um, the 60th to 79th percentile across three of the topics and right at the hump of the bell curve on the rigorous expectations topic. That said, while um, our secondary students aren't responding as strongly compared to all schools nationally, they have seen increases in four out of six of the survey topics this year, showing positive momentum uh, in a good direction. Switching gears to family satisfaction, we saw some really exciting uh, growth. We saw that 72% favorable um, responses to questions about school climate. This also put us in the 70th percentile national, nationally compared to other urban schools and districts. While we saw a decrease uh, by four percentage or three percentage points last year, we saw a four percentage point increase this spring, putting us one percentage point above the uh, baseline in 2022. We've also seen really strong growth across a number of questions, two of them being, um, how well do administrators at your school create a school environment that helps students learn? With 73% of uh, family members who responded, responding favorably, and that marks a seven percentage point increase from last spring. You might remember um, last spring, we did see some decreases in these questions, so it's really great to see the rebound this year. In addition, some of the most uh, notable increases at the, question, um, at the question level were centered around learning, with feel, uh, families feeling much more positively about learning environments generally, which is um, awesome to hear uh, that that is getting back uh, and talked about at home. In terms of satisfaction, we also um, saw 88% of families telling us that staff at their child's school go out of their way to answer questions and help me find solutions. That's a 5% increase from last year. And 90% of families said, my child's school treats me like a valued member of the school community, an increase of five percentage points from last year. So uh, these two questions in particular were really positive. Looking into other areas but uh, beyond just the school climate topic, we also saw exciting increases in barriers to engagement and school safety school safety in particular. We saw um, that school safety increased by four percentage points, and that moved Austin ISD from the 20th to 60th percentiles nationally when compared just to other urban districts, which is really exciting. Looking closer at the questions, we saw um, family perceptions about school safety increased across every single uh, question here. And we still see this gap between our lowest percent favorable and our highest, and our lowest being, how often do you worry about violence at your child's school with 54% of families responding in a favorable way? But that also was an 11 percentage point increase from spring 2023, making it the, um, biggest increase across all of the questions in this topic and really driving a lot of that growth that we're seeing this spring. Looking a little closer at um, staff perceptions of district support, 
I know this has been uh, something that district uh, and the uh, Board of Trustees have been focused on over the past few years. We saw some really exciting growth. While uh, we're still seeing um, that less than half of our staff are responding positively to questions about the support schools get from the district, we've seen uh, increases across all the questions, and some of them were um, really pronounced. And looking closer at all of these questions, one of the questions we ask, which we can use as a demographic filter, is if a friend or colleague were looking for a job, to what extent, if at all, would you recommend this school? The interesting thing about responses when you're looking um, at responses to questions about school support, folks who responded quite a bit and strongly recommend uh, to this question about their job satisfaction, they tended to respond 75 percentage points more likely, uh, or sorry, 15 to 20 percentage uh, points more positively to questions about district support, which is really interesting um, considering the majority of folks did respond quite a bit and strongly when asked uh, that question about um, if they would recommend their school to a friend or a colleague. So I'm really looking forward to joining you all um, during the, board, the upcoming board meeting to answer your questions you might have. As we think about building momentum in this work, uh, thinking about uh, some of the things that we're thinking about in the future are how we're collecting feedback from campuses um, about survey administration process so that we can boost future response rates, particularly in student and family. Creating consistency around how the district and campuses are communicating those key takeaways, again, to help boost participation and interest in this um, program. Part of this will be aligning on expectations uh, for participation thinking about how we encourage school teams while the survey may not be um, uh, mandatory participation, uh, wanting to make sure that we um, are showing the value and encouraging them uh, to get as many of their students and families and staff to respond as possible. And finally, one thing we're really excited about for the student survey next year at Panorama um, is we'll be rolling out some updates um, to the survey instruments geared toward improving the readability of student survey questions. We've heard feedback over the years about some of the words and how um, students are able to understand them. And so over the past 18 months or so, uh, we've been going through a process of testing um, uh, some updates that um, are minor updates, but will be significant um, in helping students uh, more easily complete their surveys. And we're very grateful since uh, members of AISD have uh, participated in some of those conversations to help us better understand what improvements we might wanna focus on. And we'll, we're excited to share those this summer going into next year. Thank you all so much for your time. I'm looking forward to seeing you all uh, very soon and answering your questions. Have a great day.